Receive the joy of your glory, giving thanks to God, who has called you into the heavenly kingdom. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. So we are united as a digital internet family, a digital parish at this moment in time. And we're keeping in the church um, still the period of Easter, six more weeks of Easter. And today we have um, the second Sunday of Easter that's still part of the Octave of Easter. And we hear the great account of the Lord appearing to the Twelve in the Upper Room, uh, to St. Thomas in particular. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. So, to express the fact that it is our whole parish that are united in this act of worship, our readings are going to, by the miracle of modern technology, uh, now be brought to you by different parishioners uh, and different other people uh, who are watching and joining us digitally elsewhere. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The whole community remained faithful to the teaching of the Apostles, to the brotherhood, to the breaking of bread and to the prayers. The many miracles and signs worked through the Apostles made a deep impression on everyone. The faithful all lived together and owned everything in common. They sold their goods and possessions and shared out the proceeds among themselves according to what each needed. They went as a body to the temple every day, but met in their houses for the breaking of bread. They shared their food gladly and generously. They praised God and were looked up to by everyone. Day by day the Lord added to their community those destined to be saved. The Word of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his love has no end. Let the sons of Israel say, His love has no end. Let the sons 
sons of Aaron say, His love has no end. Let those who fear the Lord say, His love has no end. I was thrust down, thrust down and falling, but the Lord was my helper. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has been my saviour. There are shouts of joy and victory in the tents of the just. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. This day was made by the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. The second reading is from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy has given us a new birth as his sons, by raising Jesus Christ from the dead, so that we have a sure hope and the promise of an inheritance that can never be spoilt or soiled and never fade away, because it is being kept for you in the heavens. Through your faith, God's power will guard you until the salvation which has been prepared is revealed at the end of time. This is a cause of great joy for you, even though you may for a short time have to bear being plagued by all sorts of trials, so that when Jesus Christ is revealed, your faith will have been tested and proved like gold. Only it is more precious than gold, which is corruptible, even though it bears testing by fire, and then you will have praise and glory and honour. You did not see him, yet you love him, and still without seeing him, you are already filled with a joy so glorious that it cannot be described, because you believe. And you are sure of the end to which your faith looks forward, that is, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus said, you believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you, and showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord, and he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so am I sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. Thomas, called the twin, who was one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. When the disciples said, We have seen the Lord, he answered, Unless I see the holes that the nails made in his hands, and can put my finger into the holes they have made, and unless I can put my hand into his side, 
I refuse to believe. Eight days later, the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. The doors were closed, but Jesus came in and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he spoke to Thomas, put your finger here, look, here are my hands. Give me your hand, put it into my side. Doubt no longer, but believe. Thomas replied, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, you believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. There were many other signs that Jesus worked and the disciples saw, but they are not recorded in this book. These are recorded so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing this, you may have life through his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. So in my sermon today, I want to talk about um, the difficulty of doubt, and particularly how St. Thomas can help us in this regard. That many of us in this weird, awkward, um, difficult period of history are having our doubt tested, or rather our faith tested and having doubt. That where we are in the Southwest, COVID-19 hasn't or hasn't yet taken a big hold the way it has in other parts of the country. That we're, most of us at least, aren't yet directly affected by it. But we are certainly indirectly affected. This lockdown, this change of our lifestyle that's gone on for weeks now. You know, for many of us, I know it's, it is testing our faith. Well, St. Thomas can help us in that regard. So, many of you will have heard me argue before um, about St. Thomas. Um, so St. Thomas is often referred to as the, the proverbial skeptic. He doubts everything. Well, my theory is that that's not quite true, that there's a particular type of doubt Thomas has, that he's actually more of a cynic than a skeptic. So a skeptic doubts anything. You say, ah, oh, the sun's shining, and they say, ah, oh, it's not really sun. Whereas the cynic isn't someone who doubts everything, but rather doubts goodness. That you say, ah, oh, the sun's shining, and they say, I can see clouds over there. That the cynic doubts the reality of goodness. And usually he doubts the reality of goodness because of an experience of evil. That he believes in evil more than he believes in goodness because he's seen evil. Now, there are a few reasons I think St. Thomas is a cynic. Um, but my key point would be that when the others say that they have seen the risen Lord, he doesn't say, show me his risen body. Rather, he points to the evidence of evil. He points to the signs of suffering. He says, Show me the wounds that killed the Lord. He points to the experience of suffering, of what's gone wrong. Now, St. Thomas wasn't always someone to point out the worst. In fact, earlier in the Gospels, um, we see him making one of the most brave of all the statements of the disciples. So there was a moment when Jesus set out for Jerusalem, where it was clear at that stage in the Gospels that 
death lay ahead of him if he went to Jerusalem. And what did the disciples say? Well, actually, at that stage, Thomas is full of bravery, and he says, let us go with him, that we may die with him. Amazing brave words. But by this moment of the Gospels, by the start of today's passage, this brave disciple has changed dramatically. He's become cynical. He's pointing to what's wrong. He's refusing to believe. And what had happened in between, what had happened between this brave disciple saying, let's go with him and die with him, and this moment now when he's pointing to the worst, show me the wounds. Or what had happened in between was the cross. What had happened in between was the experience of the cross. That the sight, the Lord on the cross had shattered his faith. And the experience of suffering can shatter our faith too. That we can let the experience of evil so overwhelm us that we no longer really believe in good. We believe in evil. So how does the Lord respond to the cynic's doubts? How does he respond to, to Thomas there? Well, the Lord doesn't try to avoid the evidence of evil. In fact, he does the reverse. He points directly to what has been the worst, what has been evil, and points out that he's triumphed over it. He shows him his wounds and says, look, put your fingers into the holes made. Put your hand here into my side. The same Lord Jesus who hung on the cross appeared there before the disciples, appeared there before Thomas to show that he had overcome everything that was wrong in the world. And so as the Lord says, not in this passage but elsewhere, in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. So in summary, if you're doubting now, if your faith is hovering now as it is for some, for many, if you're seeing the problems more than you're seeing the good, well remember this image put before us in today's gospel. Remember the triumphant Lord showing his wounds to Thomas, showing that he had confronted all that is the worst and overcome it. And as those risen wounds healed Thomas's doubts, let's ask the Lord that they might heal our doubts too. We now have the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the, bless of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And for our intercessions, today is the second Sunday of Easter, the Divine Mercy Sunday, when we remember the gift of forgiveness that the Lord Jesus entrusted to his apostles there in the upper room. And so let us pray. For those who, like St. Thomas, do not believe, and for all struggling to believe amidst the world's current suffering, let us pray that the grace of God might lead us all to stronger faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our bishops, priests, and the Pope, let us pray that they might find ways to shepherd us today, and that we might soon be able to return to the sacraments. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who govern us, let us pray that they might be granted wisdom and for the ongoing recovery of our Prime Minister. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who are particularly aware of their need of mercy, those in illness and pain as well as those in grave sin, let us pray that the merciful grace of the Almighty and the good deeds of their neighbours might help them in their need. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Let us pray that our beloved dead may share in the risen glory of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In a moment of silence, let us bring our private petitions to the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us join our prayers to those of our Heavenly Mother as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Heavenly Father, your Son, Jesus Christ, revealed your power when he rose from the dead. Reveal your power to us today, we ask, by hearing the prayers we offer, those spoken out loud, and those in the silence of our hearts. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness. Through Christ our Lord. 
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but at this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And if you're able to kneel where you are, uh, please kneel in union with the, the Eucharistic prayer. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Do you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Mark, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember also, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and those who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept the sublation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, 
all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek Holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel, to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, in all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Bring your hand and feel the place of the nails, do not be unbelieving but believing. Alleluia. I wish, Lord, to receive you with the purity, humility, and devotion with which your most holy mother received you, with the spirit and fervor of the saints. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, today, Divine Mercy Sunday, as we heard in the Gospel, the gift of forgiveness given through the ministration of the priests in the Sacrament of Confession. This is obviously a time when we can't get to confession. I can't get to confession either. I want to get to confession. So um, if you didn't see my sermon or read it, um, I think it was three Sundays ago now, um, then look back either the video clip or the sound version or the text version that talks about how we can make a perfect act of contrition with the intention of going to confession, um, but unable to get to confession physically. And that intention, in the same way that the martyrs who died in the early church, even before they were baptized, but as they were preparing for baptism, received the graces of baptism already. If we are looking ahead to get to confession, even unable to do it at the moment, then those graces in a perfect act of contrition, as it's called, can be applied to us now. Today is the last day of the Easter octave, so it is therefore still Easter day. So uh, rejoice today, celebrate today, um, whatever you're able to do, food-wise and whatever. Today is a day to be still celebrating Easter. The Lord be with you. 
May my God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia.